Welcome back, everyone. This is Dave from Gordon Productions with my co host Stacey here to talk, talk about kids versus aliens. This is the continuation of Halloween month. Yes. We look at... Happy October, everybody. Yes, yes. The movie's description reads as follows An all time rager of a teen house party turns to terror when aliens attack, forcing two Warnick siblings to band together to survive the night. The movie was written by Jason Eisner and John Davies. Davies has six writing credits, some of which he shares with Eisner including Hobo with a Shotgun. This is his last credit, but this is a recent movie, so that doesn't mean anything. Uh, Eisner also directed this film, 12 writing credits for him, including a series he created that are wrestling-themed, which you can definitely see the influence of in this movie. Mm. He has 14 directorial credits, 7 acting credits, and some producer credits as well. Before we any further, I'll tell you a couple of things. When this is not a sport podcast, if you haven't watched the episode, I highly recommend you check it out, and then come back and give us a listen. Secondly, if you're listening on one of the platforms that this podcast is now available on, please follow and feel free to check out my YouTube channel, Corn Productions, where additional content can be discovered. If you're on my YouTube channel, please like, share, and comment, and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so Stacey, I'm very curious okay. to hear your thoughts So on before this I get movie. to my actual thoughts, let me okay. tell you my initial reaction when I started watching this film. Mm-hmm. So we okay. So we talked about covering this. We'd already agreed to cover it. Neither <laughs> of us had watched it first. Right. We watched it this week. I know I watched it twice. Once to watch it, I actually watched it. I was on vacation with my family. I was like, I know what movie we're gonna watch tonight in our, you our little Airbnb it with the rental. Yes, I did. Oh, I am boy. so sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so my initial reaction two minutes into this film is I go, haven't I seen this before? I know I haven't. I know I've not seen this movie because we've been looking at this movie for quite a while. I know where you're going with this. And I went, I've seen this. Yeah. But I, ha- I know I haven't. Um, and then I realized what it reminded me of, and I had that in my mind for the entire film, and it wasn't until after my first time finished watching it, because, you know, I just watched it from there. And when I looked it up, I realized, oh, this is why this felt familiar to me. Okay. This was a feature adaptation of a short. Yes. Uh, the short is called Slumber Party Alien Abduction, and it was featured in the film VHS 2. Which I had gotten wind of. And then I went, after watching the movie, I went and checked that out. Uh It's very similar. It's like an abbreviated version of it. What's really weird to me is that most of the characters in that short are teenagers. There's like a couple of little kids. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why they de-aged them for this movie. Well, you'd have to ask the writer and director. Right, yes. Um, Yeah, so I've watched three or four of the VHS franchise. I don't love the franchise. Mm. Um, It's one of those franchises that you either love it or hate it among the horror community. Like a lot of people talk about it. There's a lot of hype for VHS, um, which if anyone's not familiar with that, it's an anthology style movie series where each movie features basically a whole bunch of shorts that they splice together um, under the guise of some, a somewhat cohesive story that usually involves VHS tapes. Uh, so you're getting all different subgenres of horror represented in the VHS franchise. In general, I, I don't know. I just don't love the movies. I've tried, like I said, I've watched a few of them and I just find them kind of icky. Most of the stories are just either really vulgar or <laughs> really boring or I don't know. I, there's a couple segments I liked, but overall I just don't love the movies. And I remember watching this segment, Slumber Party Alien Abduction, and I'm pretty sure I fell asleep during it. Okay. I know I finished it, but I think it's one where I was like, I don't care about this segment in the slightest. Mm. And it existed. Okay. But here we are covering the full-length movie version of it. So, <laughs> yay! Um, okay, so my thoughts on this film. Um, this is not a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So- I, yeah, I, I don't love this movie. I feel like a lot of it's really pointless. I don't understand the ending. Um, <laughs> Believe me, I'll get to that. But I will say, say something positive about this film that we're about to spend two hours talking about. Actually, it's not going to take that long. Um, I don't. I think this will be a fair. It's a very short movie. It's only an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, which so is actually the same length as Halloween Party. So. Yeah. Um, the great thing I want to say about this is Phoebe Rex stars in it, which yes. is the reason we're, we, we are doing this movie. Phoebe my Rex. My girlfriend from From. Uh. And I'm really happy for her that she got to star in a feature film. Mm-hmm. Now, and that's that's about the best thing I can say. <laughs> I'm a little confused about her. Okay. Because this was not 
that far from her appearance in From, well, and yet she looks significantly younger. I think there. this was filmed several years before it was released. Gotcha. Um, I don't know when it was filmed, but it wasn't released until 2023, and I feel like it's several years before that. So either way, if you look at, uh, yeah, I, I definitely feel like even there's other people in this movie that that we recognize from other things, and they all look a little bit younger. So I feel like it was filmed four or five years, maybe. Gotcha. I'm, right. not, I'm just pulling that number out of the air. But Either definitely, way, it, it, it was one that must have taken a while to get it released. Either way, Phoebe, I want you to call me in between, sometime between this movie and before you get stuck to a tree with a nail in your head. So uh -huh. It was rebar. Rebar. My bad. My bad. <laughs> uh, but either way, you know, call me in between that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll give you my number. Yeah. Well, you know, she... Phoebe did survive that that day of That's, shooting. Okay. I mean, Kelly didn't. No, no. But but Phoebe's still around. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. I actually I actually reached out to her on Instagram, not for creepy reasons. <laughs> sure. <it is>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, but I, I reached out to her. I tried. I sent her a message trying to see if she would come onto our show. Uh, I didn't get any you kind didn't of get reply. Anywhere. Well, but... you know, we have people. We can talk to our people, see if any of our people... Talk, talk are... to our peeps, our homies. We got peeps in Nova Scotia. Um, so, yeah, if any of our people are, are buddy with Phoebe, let her know. We'd love to talk to her. All right, so I, <laughs> I have yet to actually register an opinion on this movie. I think I might have hinted at it already. But I agree with you. It is not a very good film. And I was, I was trying to be fair to this film. I was watching this at the beginning. And I'm like, well, okay, this movie wasn't really made for me. It was, you know, obviously made for a younger set of uh, people, like but kids. was it, though? That's my thing is, <laughs> as I went along, I'm like, I'm really not sure who this movie was made for. Because if we're talking younger kids, there's a lot of material in here okay. that is not appropriate. Well, knowing that this stemmed from a short that was part of the VHS franchise, I'm going to say no. It was not meant for a younger audience, because that's a very mature audience film. But... An older audience is going to be really annoyed by these kids. Yeah, and maybe and then this as, answers yeah. your reason of why they de-age some of these characters. Mm. And I did not go back and rewatch the uh, Slumber Party alien abduction. I was going to, and then I, I said, nope, <laughs> not going to. Um, I, I actually have watched it after watching this I story. mean, I had seen it in the past, but I, I didn't rewatch it to like look at the, the mm. character through lines and stuff like that, which I kind of wanted to, and then I moved on. Um, maybe that's part of the reason. They made the kids a little bit younger. They... They wanted, they called it kids versus aliens because maybe they wanted to make this appropriate for a younger audience than would have seen VHS. And, and it's failed. Not, yeah, they failed miserably. <laughs> if that was their goal, they failed. I don't the know. More we Do we know the rating on this film? Does it have a rating? Uh, I'm sure it does. I didn't look into it. But then, you know, like I'm thinking, all right, this is kind of borderline inappropriate for the kids. It's definitely inappropriate for and little then, kids. And then we get to the point where a kid is stabbed to death with a sword. Um, and then we have that ending. Like, what the hell is that ending? Um, the language like, in this yeah, film. Yeah. All of these, like, 12-year-old kids are swearing every 30 seconds. And let's be real here. <laughs> if you ever heard a 12-year-old talk to their friends, like, if you're just around for 12-year-olds talking to each other, this is how they talk to each other. Is like, it? It is. Maybe voice. Yeah, I, I know. I, I've heard girls this day and age, about the same age, talking to each other like that. And yeah, yeah I just, yeah, the ending was like, you, you got to be kidding me. Uh, like, if you're setting up a sequel, okay. Uh, I did see notes of that, that they're hopeful for a sequel. I'm pretty sure they're not going to get one. I mean, I would watch it. <laughs> would you? I would, just because I'm curious. I, I think this is a terrible movie, but I still am slightly curious. Of, like, where is this going? <laughs> yeah. What is the motivation behind the way this movie ended? Yes, exactly. How did the short end? Because I don't actually remember. I don't did remember, just, but... Now, I know the one diff big difference from the short that I do remember is it was all about a dog. Yeah. There was a, a camera hook to the dog was the entire <laughs> filming narrative of the, the short. And I feel like the dog was replaced with the ATV. Yeah. In this movie, right? Yeah. That was the dog's job. I don't think it really ended so much as it just kind of stopped. Yeah. So that, it may be more kind of ended recall. during the, the climax of this film. Maybe. Where like... But, you know, watching that short, you kind of see little glimmers of <coughs> where the movie goes and some of the scenes. But they're just really abbreviated and you don't get any context. The film definitely expands on those things. 
Uh, I'm not sure it's to this film's benefit that it does that, <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so let's let's get into it. Already mentioned the main yeah. star is Phoebe Rex. She plays mm. a girl named Samantha. Now, if you don't know what we're talking about, Phoebe Rex. She played a character named Kelly. Yeah. On from, mm. she was in. I don't have this in my notes. Two or three episodes. Um, yes. Featured in the episode Tether of a season two episode, and her first episode would have been the season two pilot. It was Tether episode three? I believe it was. So she would have been in the first three episodes of season two. If that's yeah. True. Um, basically, her fate is uncertain in the first episode. The second episode, we end stumbling upon her. I'm pretty sure, and then episode two kind of deals with episode. Three. If three is Tether, I think two is where she's left with her fate unknown. One, she's just kind of there because that's when everybody's getting off the bus and she may not even have any lines in that episode. Gotcha. But yeah. She's definitely there. She's in a couple episodes. Okay. Yeah. She's in a couple episodes of From. Spoiler alert. We already mentioned this. She dies in yes. From. Yes. Her character doesn't last very long, but she seems to have sort of a significance to the overall story or at mm-hmm. least the things that happen to her do. And uh, the fact that her name is Kelly is important to the story, yep. important to the character of Boyd. Uh, if you don't watch From, please go watch it. Absolutely. It's an amazing show. We are covering it here on the channel. Season 3 is just started. Yep. Uh, and spoiler alert, when you see Kelly, she dies. I'm sorry. I mean, anyway. Well, as of when we're filming this, we haven't started Season 3 yet. But by the time this is airing for you to listen to, Season 3 is probably already started we assume uh, but we don't really know at this at the time that we are but who knows this. kelly yeah. might come back in season three that would be that's awesome the thing about from is you never know where it's going both timeline related and uh dead people hallucinations and you yep. never know you B- never know bb rex we and or kelly can you know we wouldn't mind hallucination seeing them again yeah anytime like she can, she can, she can haunt me if she wants. I will, I will totally accept being haunted by Phoebe Rex or Kelly, <laughs> whichever. Um, and that role plus this is really her her only main credits. I think she has a couple other shorts or something. I didn't note anything else. I looked into her. Um, let's see. Let me go. I know this is definitely her only starring role. Is Kids versus Aliens. Uh, she has six credits in total. Uh, her most recent seems to be a miniseries that Taylor Olson was behind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Taylor Olson is uh, one of our... Do you have the name of that miniseries? No, I didn't note it. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. It's one yeah. of them. I yeah. think there's... Yeah, there's a lot of... Mm. A lot of uh, short format work mm. going on in Nova Scotia. Yes. Seems to be some really cool projects that we don't have access to because we're in the States. Yep. Uh, okay, so the, the setup of the movie is Samantha's a teenager, and uh, she's with her younger brother, Gary... And two of his friends, they're the the kind of uh, stars of the film. Mm. And then we have three teenage characters who join in. And the seven of them are the main stars. Yeah. We have a few other characters. We have a big party. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was hoping for this to be the Halloween party that I was missing when we covered the film Halloween Party that did not have a Halloween party in it. I mean, it's sort of a Halloween party. It's sort of. There is a Halloween party. Yeah. Is it Um, one that you would want to attend? It didn't... I wanted it to fulfill that need for me to see a Halloween party, and it it, it did a little bit. But no, I still didn't get... I'm still looking for a good Halloween party movie. <laughs> okay, well, we'll be on the lookout for that. If anybody has any suggestions... And like then, of 20- course, as the title suggests, uh, Aliens! Yes. There's Aliens. <laughs> so, I think my biggest part of the problem is we spent too much time at the beginning... like. For first half hour of this movie is all this drama. It's introducing the characters and yeah, it's doing what the short couldn't do, which was tell right. us who these people are. I just think it could have been done more concisely. So watching it the first time, like, and I watched this with my mother mm. and my husband, and Adam did uh, kind of skip out halfway through. He did not finish. No, my mom finished the whole movie with me. And, and what did she think? Of she this movie? she didn't have any nice anything nice to say, <laughs> and she says, "You better not go on your show and say it was a great movie." <laughs> Uh, we definitely are not doing that. <laughs> We're that's not for doing sure. that. No, we are always honest here. Yeah. Um, but we can uh, we can appreciate the now, work without loving the result. <laughs> I wanted to like this movie. I, I I came into this wanting to enjoy it, and I, anything that I cover for Quorum Productions, I intend to go, to come into it and hoping to enjoy it. Right. I don't want to come in and tear things down. Right. Even though that is kind of fun, it's just not my intention. Yeah. So I was giving this movie the benefit of the doubt. Uh, it just, it failed. It just utterly failed. It's 
it's pretty rough around the edges, I guess. Uh, now, there's uh, the other reason we were doing this is because it showed up on uh, a, like Jamie McGuire's right film, filmography. Uh, he was a background player. I, did you ever spy him? I didn't. Okay. I tried. So I have a list of five or six background actors that we know. Okay, because there's a there's are, a thousand. There's a thousand of them. Thousand of them. Yeah. And I think um, I'm gonna end this show if my voice still works by reading all of them. Okay. Because I just think it's super cool that whoever did the IMDb for this film put credits for all of the background actors, which is not something you see. Right, absolutely. Um, and I think that's awesome that somebody wanted to give them recognition, so I'd like to give them recognition. One of the things we do is we talk about all the actors as we meet them mm. in the things that we cover and, and some of their stuff. Now, I'm not going to go into their biographies of everybody, <laughs> now, the but other, I will attempt yeah. to read the list at the end of all this right. if I can still talk. <laughs> uh, the other person I want to bring up that was a background performer in this, and I didn't put it in my notes, but uh, it's in yours. Well, I have all of those kind of for the end of my notes, but we do have a few. Um, Ann Doyle, maybe? Yeah, nope. Uh, Mar 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 Marietta Land. Marietta Land, okay. Who showed up in Halloween Party that we yes. recently covered. she was in Halloween Party. Which was her first she credit. She played Zoe. That's the girl whose room was haunted. Yes, and she's supposed to show up in Sullivan's Crossing, which yes. we might she have already covered. in an episode yeah. of Season 2, which yeah. as of the time we're recording this, we haven't seen, but it starts October 3rd. We're filming this way ahead of time. Yeah, so by so, now we should have seen her. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know what episode she's in. I just have one episode. Right, yeah. Um. Yeah, anyways, there's, there's several names on this IMDb that we recognize, mm. which is why we're covering this film. And, yeah. Uh, so, do we have anything else to say before let's, just diving in? Let's just in? dive in and talk about I the think, movie. I think and we've kind of rambled on. We will, um, I will hit on all of these actors um, as we meet them. Okay. Okay. So, the movie begins late at night on a boat. And I We're believe, on a fishing boat. Yep. This is reminding me of, of Sullivan's, or of The Sinner, the which Sinner, we just finished covering Which is recently. funny that you bring that up, yep. because I believe one of the three people in the scene is Bruce, played, played by Monte Murray who we've talked about before having both appeared in The Sinner Season 4. Yes, he plays and, Don Lanier in The Sinner. And Don, her dad, and the tractor. He is in the film Don, her dad, and the tractor um, as the character named Angus. He's also in one episode of Sullivan's Crossing. Ah, right, that's it, right. And uh, Don, her dad, and the tractor, of course, if you haven't seen that one, we covered that. We also have an interview with the... Uh, writer and director of that film, yep. Shelley Thompson, so go check that out as well. Also in the scene is Jimmy, played by Ali Akbar Akbar. and uh, Ali Akbar Akbar Kamal. I'm going to read this little blurb that I got off of Internet Movie Database because okay. it's, it's really it's interesting to me. He was born in Afghanistan. Ali Akbar made his way to Canada, where he studied, studied film production at Toronto Film School. He has successfully written and directed many short films. In 2016, Ali directed his first feature film, Baseless, which was shot in Kabul, Afghanistan, followed by God Forsaken in 2019. Most recently, Ali was, has made the move to Nova Scotia, where he has become a full member of Actra, uh, where he is focusing on stunt work, appearing in The Sinner, which is he's not credited in, by the way, but mm. he, it's not in his in his page, but it's mentioned in his bio. That he appears in it? Yes. So he must have done background work. Right, yes. As well as other projects, more of his work can be found in his YouTube channel, uh, Makama Films. So, okay, yeah, yeah I, I just put from his IMDb credits that he uh, he's not really an actor. Um, he yeah. has, he has a lot of editing credits, directing credits, and cinematographer credits. So he belongs in Nova Scotia because yes. everybody in Nova Scotia seems to have wear many hats and work all angles of uh, in front of and behind the camera. <laughs> so he was actually in a series called The Trades. Uh, which features mm, that's a, it's a new show. Yeah, I want to watch that one. I don't think it's available here. And you should if you if we ever get the chance to do it because it features number people number of people who appeared in this film as well as Rob Wells who was the one of the basically stars of Dawn, Her Dad, and the yeah, Tractor. He's one of the uh, the Trailer yeah. Park Boys. Yeah, and the trades keeps coming up. I keep seeing it come up, mm. and I think they I think just one season has has uh, aired so far in Canada. I I feel like I saw something saying it was going to come to CW. But I might have made that up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to look into that. But right. it'd be great if we do get it because it looks like a fun show. So all told, he has eight uh, editing credits, seven directorial credits for writing stints, and two credits as a stuntman and much, much more. The captain in the scene is played by Lee J. Campbell. He has 52 credits for him, including an episode of My Secret Identity, which starred Jerry O'Connell, uh, K-9 Widowmaker, which was a Harrison Ford movie, and an episode of a sci-fi show called Lex. And this is uh, Lee Campbell? Yes. Because I have totally different credits for him. Okay. Uh, I have that he was in an episode of Digstown. He was in six episodes of The Mist, 
and in the film The Child Remains, which is uh, one of Reed Price's yes, films I, that, that we that sounded familiar. haven't had a chance to see yet. Nope. Um, okay, so Bruce and Jimmy are the, the fishermen. They're arguing about calling it, and they say only the captain can call it, and the captain says it's going to be a long night. Yep. This is a very short scene, by the way, um, that we've managed to just cover for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they, they see a bright light, and uh, one by one they end up meeting a bad end, and the captain is the last as we see a hand grab him and pull him into the water. Yeah, basically the aliens have arrived and they have taken the fishermen. So we cut to one of those battery-powered kid cars driving over what appears to be skulls. Uh, in a lot of quick edits, the kids are playing around. We hear a lot of yelling and screaming. They're wearing dinosaur masks and spiky costumes. Lots of yelling. Uh, yeah, so the kids, and this is Samantha, which we already yep. just talked about. Her brother, Gary... Uh, and his friends, Jack and Miles, as well as some uh, background actor friends whose names we don't get to know. Okay. They so, are making a movie. Yes. That's what's yep. happening here. They're filming a movie, and it's got something to do with fighting evil dinosaur creatures. <laughs> uh, Gary is played by Dominic Marshy. I guess that's the um, you know, Mar Marche? Marche? Marici, okay. Yeah. Dominic, yeah. Okay. So 15 credits for him, including an episode of The Good Doctor. Jack, played by Asher Grayson. He has four credits for him. Uh, Miles, played by Ben Tector. This is his only credit. Yep, this is uh, Ben's first credit. Yep. Um, and what a credit to have. Asher right? Grayson, as you said, plays Jack. He was in three episodes of a show called Scaredy Cats. I oh. haven't seen that one. I, I'm going to guess that this did not help their careers any. Yeah, I mean, they're like, they're young. They're, <laughs> they're kids. They, they got some time. Uh, Dominic, who played Gary, was also in uh, six episodes of the 2021 revival of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, yes, so he I had a, a recurring role in that. So mm -hmm. he's done something uh, with himself. Yeah, he's like basically. But all three of these kids, um, I feel like they did a good job with the material they were given. They did, but they are also incredibly annoying. I think they're meant to be, though. Yeah. It's, it's, okay, so there, you can create characters that are meant to be annoying to the other characters in the film without also <laughs> annoying us at the same time. That is actually possible. And I'm going to chalk that up to bad directing uh, by the uh, director, um, Jason Eisner. I think maybe he should have had them tone it down a little bit because this, this is just too much, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. All right, so they're filming this movie. Um, now, Sam, she has a problem that she's supposed to shoot the dinosaur with a gun because she wants to use a sword. <laughs> and her brother, and that's Gary, he tells her that girls don't use swords and he's the director, so he gets to say what happens. And that point, you know, becomes important later on in the plot. The fact that uh, Phoebe, I wanted to call her Phoebe, Sam really thinks girls should be using swords. And hey, she gets to use one later in the film. She does, she does. Uh, so filming resumes after the argument is settled, but then a beer bottle is thrown. Yeah, Miles gets a beer bottle to the head. And it turns out to be three teenagers. The leader, Billy, is played by Kayla McDonald, who we know be best from Sullivan's Crossing Season 1. Yes, he uh, plays Caleb in Sullivan's Crossing. That is the love interest of, I wanted to call him Spencer, because that's his name in Halloween Party, um, Jackson. Yes. Jackson's yep. love interest, Caleb. Caleb and, is played by Caleb. Okay, so <laughs> my criticisms of this character do not extend to the actor. The actor does a fine job here. Uh, it just, he starts off as a garden variety butt wipe and um, then gradually turns into like a complete yeah, irredeemable this character psychopath. Is ridiculous he has zero <laughs> redeeming qualities at any point in the film and it's, it, I it, have it, no it, idea why Sam is into him. In the slightest. You could do way better. Like, for instance, uh, hey, uh, me, I'm available, just so you know. Anyway, so yeah, it's like, I, I just... I'm going to point out that, again, you're talking to Phoebe, the 20-something-year-old actress, not that, Samantha, that... the 16-year-old character. <laughs> right, thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah. And so, then... Caleb was also in 21 episodes of Moonshine, so he's a kind of regular character on that. And he was in five episodes of The Umbrella Academy. Right, yes. Uh, and Trish is played by Amanda Vickers. She is uh, two... Emma Vickers is what I have. Emma Vickers? You're probably right. I mean, one of us it must be. <laughs> uh, I mean, just by sheer odds, that has to be the case. She has two acting credits and a curious assistant director credit. Uh, and then the third is 
a Dallas played by Isaiah Fortune. I believe this is his only this credit. This is his only credit, yes, Dallas. So that's the teenage friend group. Mm -hmm. The teens harass the kids, which only stops when Samantha steps forward, and Billy stops stops it for, you know, it looks like he's trying to be kind here. Now, but I'm going to point out, when these teenagers got here, all of the extra friends, yeah. like the background actors, they skedaddled. That's the last we're going to see of any kids other than Gary, Jack, and Miles. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just teenagers and those three kids. So the kids versus aliens here really is calling all of the teenagers kids. Right. Yeah. Um, it's not just about the little kids. We had a lot of little kids in the first scene. They they hightailed it out of here other than the Gary's two best friends who stuck around because, you know, they give lines. Um, so he ends up asking if uh, if Phoebe has a... Not Phoebe. Uh, I don't think he... Sam. Sam, <laughs> Sam has a boyfriend. And Trish <laughs> keeps up the bullying. Uh, they leave, and Samantha is very clearly smitten. I couldn't even tell you why. Yeah, so but... she she tells them she's just babysitting. This hurts Gary's feelings. Um, and he says, you wanted to be in the movie, right? right. They're friends. They're mm. hanging out. Like, that's mm. all legit. But she's trying to show off to these teens, and she's like, I'm just babysitting my brother. I don't want to be here. <laughs> um, so that starts this feud between the siblings. Right. Um, which is going to fuel their relationship throughout the rest of the film. So uh, we cut to Sam in her room. A and reporter is talking the about... the television reporter. Yes. I have a credit for them. You're going to have to give me a second. The television reporter is Pasha Ebramini. Wow. Sorry. I'm glad I, I did. I, I probably said that wrong. I'm glad I'm not the one um, that said that. They are in two episodes of Midnight Mass. Okay. Uh, two episodes of The Haunting of Bly Manor. Those are both uh, okay. Mike Flanagan series. I actually saw that series. Yeah, that's a great. Those are both great. Yeah. Um, two episodes of Shadow Hunters mm. and an episode of The Good Doctor. A lot of good doctor uh, actors here. Yeah. I believe that's filmed in Canada. Uh, good Doctor, I believe, is Vancouver. Vancouver, so that makes so, sense. Other side of Canada. Yeah, gotcha. But um, okay, so the television announcer is reporting about the fishermen yep. that, that we saw in the first scene, it's reminding us mm. that that happened. They've been missing for uh, for a few days now. And the same day that they went missing, people reported seeing a fiery object fall from the sky. And he also tells us Halloween is two days away. Oh, okay. So that's that's good, that's good because this is actually a Halloween movie. It is. Imagine that. We picked, a, <laughs> we picked something right about yeah. it. <laughs> so Sam is stalking Billy's social media. And now no longer wants to be in the movie, much to Gary's very whining disappointment. Uh, the kids go back to filming their and movie. It's noted that she picks out a shirt that's not her usual style, that everyone's going to comment on how that's not like her. But yet she owns it. It right. came from her closet. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah, they go they go on to film the movie. But Gary ends up falling off a ladder and breaking his arm, which results in a trip to the hospital that Sam Samantha is not thrilled with. Okay, so I had an issue with this. The four of them, because she's, you know, in charge, she's babysitting, yeah. her and the three kids, they ride their bikes to the hospital. Yes. Gary has a broken arm. Yes. She's not being a very good babysitter. No. Uh, so she must not drive. So Samantha, as a character, is actually not that great herself, but... I mean, yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe you should have called an ambulance. Or taken or an Uber. Called or call anybody you know that has a car. Right. You must know somebody that can drive your little brother to the hospital or an ambulance if you don't have anybody because it could not have been easy for him to ride his bicycle with a broken arm to the hospital. No. Uh, by the way, in the next scene, we end up meeting their mother, played by Jessica Marie Brown, who has a couple, who was in a couple of episodes of The Sinner Season 4, so we've already talked uh, about her. Oh, yes. Let me find her. Okay, Mom. Yeah, Jessica Marie Brown. She played Carrie in The Sinner. That was... Um, that was Percy's friend that she made music with at the bar. She was oh, like, yeah, a bar yeah, player. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and Jessica was also in an episode of Moonshine and an episode of Digstown. Yes. And we also meet the dad, played by Jonathan Torrens. Um, he is best known as the character of J-Rock on the Trailer Park Boys. Done lots and lots of stuff with them. Yep. He's in an episode of King and Pawn okay. with Reed Price. Uh, Got to mention Reed Price a few times every time we talk. Right. Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he was in two episodes of Digtown and two episodes of Moonshine. Okay, so. So, yeah, so we're at the hospital. Gary's complaining about Sam's shirt, saying she looks stupid. Um, parents show up. They're just returned from some kind of a trip. And, they announce and then they're going to go on another immediately one. Immediately this moment, they have to leave for another one. And uh, they enlist Sam to take care of Gary, which seems like that's the norm. <laughs> She's raising this boy. The right. parents are non-existent. Right. Um, 
So these parents aren't any better than Samantha is here. Uh, their son just broke their arm in Samantha's care, and then, now they're going to weave on another trip and weave them, weave Gary in Samantha's care. Yeah. And it, by the way, I'm going to bring up the fact that Gary's arm is broken. It's broken. Uh, that is important. Gary's arm is <laughs> broken. Yes. Okay. Which, yeah. I'm emphasizing that point. I, I, I know where you're going with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- so they pull uh, Sam into the hall and she complains. She said she has plans for Halloween and she doesn't want to babysit. Again, it seems like you babysit every day, so I'm not sure why you're surprised. Also, what right. plans did you have? Because you don't seem to have any friends of your own. Is she just anticipating having friends, uh, having plans with these teenagers that she doesn't have plans with yet? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she just, you know, wants to try to have plans, but doesn't actually have them. Now, the parents are mad that Gary got hurt. They ground Sam, because mm-hmm. she was the one in charge, and say that she can't, uh, she has to stay home with no phone and no friends for Halloween. But, of course, Gary isn't in trouble, and he's allowed to have Jack and Miles over. Yes. Which seems like maybe he should be in trouble for jumping off a ladder and breaking his arm. Maybe it's because Sam knows better and Gary doesn't. I mean, I, I don't really they should buy both that, be in but trouble. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with trouble. you. Um, they also should stay, the parents, and, you know, make Parent sure their, their kid gets out of the hospital, all right? <laughs> right. Like, there's got to be a form you got to sign or something. Maybe yeah. that's why they're here at all. Right. Um, but, yeah, just as quick as they arrive, they're here for literally two minutes, and they're gone again. We're never going to see them again. Right. Um, now, this oh, bit... Oh, actually, we do see them again. Do we? In an after credit sequence that I'm sure you didn't see. I didn't. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that at, okay. at the end. Um, I just want to point out here that this whole story with the parents, and, and even the way that this movie's filmed... Um, it reminds me so much of, like, a 90s kids horror story. <laughs> yeah. Um, reminiscent of, like, Are You Afraid of the Dark, Eerie Indiana, Goosebumps. I think yeah. all that whole genre. Uh, where in all of those episodes of television, parents are totally useless. Mm-hmm. They exist. They make cameos to remind you that these characters are kids and have parents. Right. But the parents are never, ever around or useful in any fashion, no matter what the kids are dealing with. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what we have here. I feel like this is done on purpose to give it this kind of 90s vibe. Gotcha. Because I don't feel like these are modern day parents. Parents don't act like this now. But, no, you know, they no. did when we were kids. Yeah. Not you, to this degree, but that's you, how they were represented in television. When we were kids, we were shoved out our door and wandered the neighborhood and told we couldn't come back until the lights went off. Like, until the sun went down and it went dark. Right. So, I mean, if this was taking place in the 90s, which it doesn't say it is. No. But if it were, like, it would make more sense that the kids are riding their bikes to the hospital. <laughs> right. Yeah, there wouldn't be an Uber or anything. <laughs> but don't they have cell phones? I could yeah, sworn... I don't think it's meant to take yeah. place in the past, but it definitely gives that kind of vibe. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, there, she's, she's checking up on uh, his social medias. So right, it's, right, it's, right. it's definitely current day. Um, so... Trish and their other friends don't know what they're doing for Halloween, and they ask Billy, and he just says he's working on something, so yeah. he's already got a plan with yeah, Sam. Which, uh, yeah, which, yeah, I could tell right from the beginning where that's going. Right. Uh, Gary and his friends... We, before that, we see a, a quick shot. We see a team of men in hazmat suits, <laughs> and they discover the remains of the fishermen. Oh. And they get a skull, and they put the skull in some kind of a briefcase. Gotcha. So very quick flash. We get to see the hazmat men right there. So Gary and his friends continue working on the movie, even with his broken arm. And they have a dinosaur thing that gets run over by Billy. Yeah, and the kids themselves are almost run over. And uh, he's here to see Samantha. And this scene is actually shown in the short. We actually see the scene where uh, um, Billy ends up running over something and then he says he's there to is see Is that Samantha. where the short starts? Mm. Somewhere around there. I, I feel like yeah. the short started with kids in a driveway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, he makes his way into the house, uh, kind of invites himself in, and he says, this place is perfect. Right. It's painfully obvious to me right. what he thinks this place is perfect for and what he's about to do. Yep. So he invites himself into her room, which he's frantically trying to clean up. He asks about her costume, and uh, it's talked. her poster is talked about. This is Valora, her favorite wrestler. I didn't look into it to see if this is an actual wrestler. I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I was a little confused by the fact that this wrestler is portrayed as using a sword. I don't think swords are part of wrestling. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think so. Uh, they wrestle and end up on her bed, and they start kissing. And Sam, don't do it. Don't do it, Sam. Uh, the kids, meanwhile, are sneaking up on Sam's door. It seems that things are getting heated, going in a heated direction when the kids burst into the room, creating a bunch of chaos. And if you don't 
if you're not seeing a bunch of red flags with how uh, this char the character of Billy is acting at this point, then she is beyond yeah, why hope. does she like Billy? I, I don't know. What is she doing? I mean, I guess girls are into bad boys, but... No, he's no. just a jerk. <laughs> like, I don't see any reason for him to like it, her to like him. I, Not I even know. a little bit. Like, he's a vile, disgusting person. <laughs> and he gets worse and worse and worse. Every scene. Yes. Every scene. Yeah. Um, I, I find it interesting to note that the kids, now when they burst in here, they're doning Halloween decorations. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Just just for the fun of it, But they have Halloween decorations um, in their hands and, and dressed in Halloween decorations. They've got, like, a uh, garland. <laughs> and it's a very weird scene. Yes. Uh, and as they're doing this, they're terrorizing them. Uh, all the lights go out. There's a bright flash, and all the light power goes off. Sam is extremely harsh with Gary, and then the kids are thrown out. The kids are mad, thinking Billy ruins everything, and then they notice a bright light and go and investigate. Yeah, so Billy physically kicked the kids out of the room. He's yes. assaulting her brother and his friends. And like, Sam is doing physically nothing. Physically picked them up and threw them out of the room. And mind um, you, one of them has a broken arm. Right. And then, you know, he just goes and continues to, to seal the deal with Sam. Yeah. And she she is being a really terrible babysitter. A, a terrible <laughs> person. Like, at, at, at times, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if Billy and Sam are basically, you know, on the same level. But then again, <laughs> Billy pulls way ahead of that on that score. But she eventually ends up redeeming herself uh, somewhere. All right. So Gary and his friends, they go outside to explore the light, um, trying to speculate what it was. They see it out on the water. So they live on this kind of big lake. <laughs> and they see the light out on the water. Now, here's something I'm confused by now that I just mentioned. They're on a lake. Were the fishermen supposed to be on this lake? I'm not sure. Because wherever the fishermen were taken from, supposed to be the same place the ship crashed, right? Right, yeah. But you don't go fishing in the middle of, like, this was like a ocean liner fishing yeah. ship. Oh, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. And not only that, but one of the, the younger kids, I forgot which one, uh, speculates that it, maybe it's aliens. And then they just lose interest and go and eat. Like, uh, Jack. Jack yeah. thinks this is a bad idea. Uh, perhaps there's poisonous gas, Yeah. but they keep walking into it. Yeah. Or perhaps it was aliens. Yeah. Um, and you know what? It's it's a kid's rambling thoughts. Yes. Um, maybe they just needed to remind us the movie's about aliens in case you forgot. Yeah, I mean, it's been 45 minutes in this movie, so you know we have to <laughs> remind us. Uh, and by the way, we see an alien in the blurry distance, so spoiler, spoiler alert, uh, there's going to be aliens. There are in aliens in, yes. in Kids vs. Aliens. Yeah. I mean, there's... There wasn't a Halloween party in the movie Halloween Party, I so... Mean, that, that's fair. Also, <laughs> there are also kids in Kids vs. Aliens. A couple. Yes. A couple kids. Um, so, yeah, as they're leaving the dock, we see this alien kind of crawling out of the water onto the dock. They are getting closer. The aliens. Are, are they there? Yes. Are they going to do anything? I don't know. <laughs> yes. So, in the morning, we think one of the kids is being attacked by one of them. But it's just the other kids who want to go spy on Sam some more. Yeah, so Sam is hanging out with the teen group now. So yes. because uh, she slept with Billy, they're, she's part of the group now. Did she actually sleep with him? That's the impression I got. God damn it, Sam. <laughs> um, if you, you could have done way if better. If you notice in this scene, she's dressed like and has her hair identical to Trish. Mm. So she is emulating the other girl in this group. Um, I think she might even have her makeup done just like her. So just like that, she is part of their little clique, or at least so she thinks. Right. Uh, Trish complains about lack of Halloween plans, and Billy suggests having the party at Sam's house. Whoa, didn't see that one coming. Sam is initially reluctant. Yeah, she knows that's a bad idea. Yeah. Um, Dallas, the other teen friend, he suggests that they call her parents and ask permission. That's a, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. So Billy... Pushes him in the water yeah. for that idea. And, uh, uh, he's yeah. almost grabbed by an alien. There's an alien under the water waiting, and it almost grabs him, uh, but it doesn't. <laughs> yep. Uh, Billy promises that they will keep it small, and her parents will never find out. And, uh, yeah, they... And uh, he convinces her by saying that he really wants to show off his new girlfriend. Aw, isn't that adorable? And she, of course, likes that idea, uh, so she agrees yeah. to have the party. The kids watching from a distance plan to inflict maximum vengeance. I can't wait to see what that entails. The party is not small, by the way. Spoiler uh, no, alert. No, we get a wild Halloween party. Yep. You know, almost making up for the lack of <laughs> Halloween party in the movie Halloween party. We see Dallas painting on walls. Uh, well, first we see Teenage Girl. And I, I got a lot of people to shout out during this party. Okay. Uh, teenage Girl is how she's credited. She's played by Alexandra McLean. 
Uh, she's in two episodes of The Trades and seven episodes of Digtown. Yep. She tells Sam that if it was her party, she wouldn't let people paint on the wall. So Sam didn't <laughs> notice people are painting on the walls. This girl tells her, and she's like, oh, wait, what? Right. Um, so that's when she realizes just how out of out of hand the party's gotten. Uh, that's when she goes and finds Dallas painting the graffiti on the wall. And there's a family portrait there. He's painting over the family portrait. Now, <clears throat> other than this one scene, I kind of feel like Dallas was almost a redeeming character among the group. Barely. But in this scene, it's like, no, he's painting over the family portrait. And he doesn't care that he's getting yelled at. It's like, uh, well, what does it matter to me? Uh, and then she finds Billy in the kitchen, and uh, she starts complaining to him. Yeah, she, he's he's begging her for he- him for help. And but he yeah. says, people are having a good time. Her parents are rich. They can just fix it all. Right. That's not going to get <clears throat> Sam in trouble at all. And we meet uh, the character of a drunken teenager. Drunken teenager is played by Jordan Poole. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He. I, I thought I'd recognized him in something. but You know, I thought that too. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the credits I pulled out, he was in four episodes of The Trades. He was in the film Thanksgiving, yes. which I haven't actually seen yet. Maybe we should cover that uh, one for Thanksgiving. I, if we can get a hold of yeah. it. Is it out? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, and he's in an episode of Chapel Wait, which I did watch that one. But, mm-hmm. yeah, he felt familiar to me. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't really pinpoint why. Maybe he looks like somebody else. Yeah, perhaps. He or maybe we recognize him from background work that he's done. Perhaps. That's not in his IMDb. It's possible. Yeah, because we've watched so many Nova Scotian mm. things now. That, right. Uh, so, yeah, Jordan Poole played drunk and teenager. He throws up in the Silver Ridge War. We're going to meet him again later. But um, right now he just throws up in the Silver Ridge War. Sam, she's doing everything she can to end this party. She's, but Billy's like, ah, just let it go. Let everybody have fun. Yeah, yeah it's she's, not like she's, he's going to have to clean up the mess. She's freaking out. She's yeah. realizing how bad he is, yeah. I think, finally. She's realizing. Uh, yeah. And we meet Smoking Friends. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, at this point, he starts to turn abusive. She says he's scaring her, and he says good. Yeah, right. So uh, uh, so she she walks away trying to yeah. you know go get people to leave. Smoking Friend, who's played by, ooh, <laughs> Bahirin Zweedy. I'm so sorry I got your name <laughs> weird. Uh, and he was in one episode of Black Summer. We've talked about that once before on our show. It's some it's kind not, of, It sounds familiar. It's a weird short format um, zombie film. Oh, Not okay. film, but series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a weird one. So, Smoking Friend asks Billy if Sam is his new girlfriend. And he says, no, she is just the keys to the house. So, if you didn't figure out what's happening here, he's saying it right now in black and white. He's not interested in her at all. He just wanted to have the party here. The kids, meanwhile, are in hiding. They're planning their revenge. They set up a camera. and uh, at, It's a drone. He's got yeah. a drone uh, and we, flying we, through the party. During the scene, we end up seeing an alien in the window yes. behind them. <laughs> yes, the alien walks past the window. I, I gotta say, I was not digging this movie, but I did dig that little shot. Yeah, there's the a lot of little, yeah. like, little tidbits of the aliens before we meet the aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, so during the scene, the friends... Um, Jack and Miles, they bring uh, Gary some Halloween candy since he couldn't go trick-or-treating. My question is, why didn't he just go with him? <laughs> I don't Sam know. wasn't going to care if he left. Right, no. I mean, why didn't he go trick-or-treating with his friends? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so Billy, meanwhile, needs the bathroom. His bladder is full. Uh, the bathroom is full itself. And Trish is, yes, another location. And it's Sam's room. Yeah, Trish lures him into Sam's room. The drone follows, yep. so the, the kids are watching all of this, uh, and we have a, yeah, a very disturbing scene uh, yeah, the, between Trish and Billy. Yeah, Gary decides to broadcast uh, what's going on between Trish and uh, Billy here, uh, but first he, he, he sends a message to the uh, living room about his displeasure with his sister, and then video of Trish and Billy making fun of her. And then peeing on Sam's velour poster, which he, she mentioned is some a hero of hers. Yeah, she was peeing. He was peeing all over her room. Uh, it was a really <laughs> weird thing. Yeah. To happen. Yeah. Sam is crying, uh, and uh, Billy finds it finds Gary and his friends in his room. So, well, before that, Dallas goes uh, because now oh, yeah, the yeah. footage that we're seeing. That the kids are projecting. They're not projecting it live. They're projecting footage that happened a few minutes ago. Right. So they're editing this footage uh, and putting it up. And right. So Billy jazz. goes into uh, uh, Sam's bedroom. Where? And interrupt, or sorry, Dallas goes in, interrupts Billy and Trish. They're in bed. Yes. They are in Sam's bed, what fooling do you, around. What do you think they're doing in there? <laughs> I, I don't know. I uh, think this, this is, is what happened after the peeing. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> These Dallas people are weird. interrupts them and tells them what's happening in the living room. And that's when he goes, um, and he gets there just in time to to witness the peeing and mm. the look on his face, how delighted he is <laughs> that everybody's getting to watch this. Yeah. This like is, he looks like so happy that this is happening. This is, this is a, a literal psychopath. And everyone at the party, mind yeah. you, this whole room full of teenagers, all thinks this is hilarious. Yeah. Nobody's disgusted by this. Nobody seems to want to help uh, Sam. Yeah. They all think it's absolutely hilarious. Who are these people? <laughs> Uh, people who that deserve to be killed by aliens. Uh, but, Sam's crushed, obviously. Yeah. yeah. And uh, that's when Billy breaks into Gary's room and stops the broadcast. Yep. And then he threatens to break Gary's arm, which, by the way, um, in previous scenes, it was established that Gary's arm is already, it's already broken. broken. So what the heck are we cast. doing here? Yeah. Yeah. So um, Billy tells Dallas to to break Gary's arm. Yep. Um, Dallas refuses. Yeah. Now, this is one of those where among these kids, Dallas is probably the better one. He's like, I'm not going to do that. And he still sucks. Well, <laughs> uh, Billy's about to do it himself. And then they're interrupted by the power going out again. The aliens are finally here. Yes. 45 minutes into this movie. Okay, it's not that long, but it, it felt like it. It might be. The, well, no, because the whole it, thing's only 75 minutes. It was like a half hour in, at least, that the aliens finally started attacking. All right, so people. the guests flee. Yes. Everybody leaves except for our main cast. Yep. And the drunken boy who's um, sitting on the porch because we get another line from him. Everybody else leaves. I guess drunken kid can't get out of here, but he's, he's okay. He's too drunk. Nobody takes him. They take all of the main characters except for Sam. Yep. Uh, and this drunken kid informs Sam where they went. Uh, uh, which is to the water. Yeah, and she goes and grabs a very convenient scuba diving. Yeah, she gets scuba stuff. deer, scuba gear out of the garage or wherever. Yeah. Um, and jumps off the end of the dock. And then manages to go straight to their alien lair yeah, very easily. Yeah, she swims to this underwater cave uh, slash alien spaceship. Yep. And uh, she begins looking for her brother, of course. And she has to hide from the aliens along the way. She finds a corpse, <laughs> a random corpse, with a sword. And wouldn't you know it, it looks exactly like Valora's sword. Yes. How convenient. She takes it and its sheath, and she now has acquired a sword. And meanwhile, she's calling for her brother. This is not very smart. She's an alien spaceship, and she's calling out for her brother. Uh, and she almost, she nearly avoids getting captured by aliens themsel- herself. She ends up, uh, they end up running by her. She finds a sword and then hears cries from Trish and others. Yeah, Trish is crying for help. Um, Sam finds her while she she's being tied up. Now the other the other people are all kind of hanging out like off to the side, but Trish has been separated from the group. She's being tied up. Billy's crying because he doesn't know what to do. The aliens pour this like orange goopy stuff on Trish. Yep. And she literally disintegrates. <laughs> I mean, she wasn't a great person, but did she deserve this? Uh, she disintegrates down to her skeleton. Yes. There's nothing left of her but a skeleton very quickly, I might add. So it's yep. a very uh, erosive acid goo that they put on her. At least it was a quick death, I guess. Gary is grabbed next, and then we see Dallas, who gets poured with green goo. Yeah, so they take they take Dallas, and they take Billy, or they take Gary. Um, Billy continues uh, to be his charming self, yes. hoping that the kids all die. Not only this, but he's holding one of the brother's heads and being like, look, watch your brother get melted to death. You would think that, you know, at this point, he would, I don't know, be human and try and <laughs> save people. So, I kept expecting them to redeem this character in some way. Yeah, no. Have him turn into, if not the greatest guy in the world, you know, at least be helpful. But no, he just he just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah. Uh, so Dallas is tied up and he's presented with this green goo that came out of an alien's nose. So this is alien boogers. Yeah. And by the way, why are they treating Dallas differently than anybody else? I mean, we don't know what their plans were. Maybe they have 12 different colors of goos. Maybe. We only got through two colors, right? Yeah. So, uh, the green doesn't disintegrate him like the orange one did to Trish. Instead, it turns him into this alien-like creature? Yes. Because that makes sense? So, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why they're bothering. We don't even know what these aliens want. We never figured that out in the film. They're, we're never told. Um, so it turns him into a character that is credited as the Beast Alien. Which so is suddenly, played by somebody else. he becomes the most powerful alien. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Dallas, the character, the human, was played by Isaiah Fortune, but the beast alien, which is Dallas, uh, once he's been gooified yep. and changes into this creature, is played by Joni Shreve. Yep. Uh, who is in five, five episodes, episodes of, the of the trades. Now, I want to point out the visual of, of what the beast alien looks like. So we have Dallas, who was wearing a hockey jersey mm-hmm. through the whole movie, I think. Or was it just the Halloween party? I thought he was wearing it throughout, but I could be wrong. I, I was thinking throughout, but now I'm thinking maybe it was just a Halloween costume. Anyways, he's wearing a jersey, a hockey jersey. And now that he's turned into this beast alien, for some reason... He has blades on his hands, uh, on both hands, but they look like Freddy Krueger blades. So I definitely feel like he's supposed to represent Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. Okay. Because he's wearing this hockey jersey and has blades for hands. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're getting vibes from both of those franchises. Gotcha. Uh, which is interesting. Yeah. So uh, Billy holds younger brother's head to watch as Gary gets melted. But Sam ends up preventing this by stabbing the aliens with the sword that she found. Uh, She takes out several of the aliens, and Billy goes on the run during this. He stumbles onto Dallas, who's been mutated into this alien that we were just talking about. One thing I want to point out, um, after Sam sliced up these aliens, she freed her brother from Mm -hmm. the chains. Gary rips the cast off of his arm and throws it. (laughs) Which is what I thought you were going with when you were talking oh. about knowing his arm's broken. Yeah, yeah. No, I was talking specifically about the scene where they were about to break okay, his Okay, well, I thought you were talking about this scene where he broke his arm two days ago. Right. He rips his cast off and throws it because that's going to help him run better or something? Yeah. His I, arm's healed? Yeah, I, at this point, I'm just so... Why are you ripping your, your cast off and throwing it? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. How are you getting through the rest of this film? (laughs) Right. You should be like, "Ah, I'm in so much pain. (laughs) Anyway. uh, And that would make him, you know, not any more annoying than he already is. Uh, Jack, meanwhile, compliments the sword. Because, you know, we got the sword's Mm -hmm. great, right? Um... Okay, so Billy Billy gets to to alien Dallas, uh, still chained up. But he rips free from his chains. This this, uh, creature is... Super powerful. There was a character in the movie Alien named Dallas. Okay. So maybe that wasn't a reference to that. I would guess so. Yeah, probably. So yeah, he's representing like all the big bads of horror franchises (laughs) is what's happening. I guess so. That's what this character is. Uh, So more aliens come to chase Sam and the kids. They manage to escape the ship back into the water. But as they swim... After Billy... Stole the scuba gear. Ah, yes. What Billy, Billy stole Sam's scuba gear. Not that that was going to help her and, like, all the kids escape. Yeah. But he stole the scuba gear and went first. And um, the boys are literally thrown in the water and told, just swim as fast as you can. Right. And Jack doesn't think he can do it, but they just push him in. Like, you have to do it. Right. You have no choice. It's either do this or get gooed to death by aliens. Right. Uh, Sam follows... And then Alien Dallas is right on their tail. And uh, Sam is grabbed by the alien. Gary and the other kids kids make it to the dock. Well, Gary and Miles make it to the dock. But Sam, we know Sam didn't make it yet. Jack doesn't surface. Right. Uh, Gary says that he wants to go back for uh, Sam. And Miles Miles tries to talk him out of it. But Sam, and, Sam, it's all relevant anyway because Sam managed to get away. Yeah, but we get this moment where, where yeah. Gary's grieving and yeah. he's he's sorry that he was feuding with his sister. He's like, mm. she's my sister. She's always been there for me. And now I lost my sister and my best friend in the same moment. Right. Uh, but, the uh, yeah, so Sam has is dragging the little brother and he isn't breathing. Well, that's not the brother. That's... Uh... Oh, I didn't know who any of these characters were, to be honest with you. I didn't know how they were related to each other. I barely was... Gary's the brother. The other yeah. two are his friends. Okay. Uh, so this is Jack. Yeah. This is the character Jack that she has. He's not breathing. Um, Sam performs CPR on him. Uh, the aliens are approaching. They're coming. They're right down the dock. Mm-hmm. Jack wakes up. He's fine. Yay. Um, and then the group manages to run away from alien Dallas... Uh, who is now, you know, coming after him again with those uh, Freddy Krueger hands. <laughs> and by the way, it's almost, I, I think it would almost be better if uh, he didn't recover from this. Uh, because I don't think his fate by the end of the film is too much yeah, better. Yeah, this poor kid. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, they make it to the house. They get into the house, but they find Billy has locked himself inside and they won't let them in. Yep. Uh, remember, it's their house. Yes. <laughs> so Billy continues to be a piece of shit. And, uh, but Dallas breaks into the house. Yes. Uh, and Billy has to escape 
And he escapes to a car. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, he's found there. Billy burns Dallas with fire. This does not get rid of him. And he manages to get away. The kids bike away from the aliens and hide. Gary speculates the aliens are using human skin to fuel the spaceship. This is only speculation. Yeah. There is no hint. So, as yeah, that. Gary suggests this. Now, listen, I watched this movie twice. I don't know why he thinks that. Neither do I. I have no idea. Like, yeah. the only thing is the scene where the girl got, like, her skin melted off. Yeah. But didn't that make the skin disintegrate? How would it have turned it into fuel? I... Like, the way that she turned to a skeleton so quickly, there's no way it preserved her skin. Yeah, the aliens just seem to be doing stuff to do stuff. Like, oh, let's just, you know, melt this person for no reason. Let's turn Dallas into an alien for no reason. Yeah, is there's, he their new leader? There's no explanation <laughs> as to what the heck is going on here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jack says he doesn't want his body to be alien fuel. I don't blame him. Yeah. Uh, Miles realizes he's never going to see his mom again. Why? Are we giving up? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, and Sam ends up apologizing to Gary. They make up, which would mean a heck of a lot more if the movie did not end the way it ended. Yeah, so uh, they make up, yeah. Um, she tells him she is his sister and she isn't going anywhere. Aw. And uh, Sam says they should stay put and wait for help to come. Uh, and so we, uh, the aliens catch up to them. Billy catches up to them and nopes out of there. Sam is surrounded and handily defeats them. They make it to uh, the wrestling area. So it, this is Yeah, it's the barn. It's where yeah. they were filming the movie. Um, she attacks some more with a sword. We get the best moment of the film for me. Okay. Where Sam pushes one of the aliens through a tree branch. And it's setting up the exact same scene as her scene in From. Okay. Where there's this alien now kind of tethered to the tree with a branch through his head. Oh, okay. Did you miss that? I did miss that. Yeah, and it's like, it's identical to her, where she spent that entire episode sitting, you know, next to the tree with this thing through her head. That's how the alien she just killed is now sitting so next this to is, a tree. So this is a bit of foreshadowing. Yeah, except I don't know which one filmed first. I'm not um, sure. I think the movie filmed first. Probably. Yeah. But uh, it is interesting because it, it's, if you look, compare the, the imagery, like that's the same, same thing. <laughs> All right. So uh, Billy's already at the wrestling area and uh, basically gets behind her. And, yeah, gets a drop on her. Yeah, he's he has, holding her by the sword. He got the yeah. sword. He's holding it to her throat or whatever. Um, Jack reminds him that Sam saved all of their lives, including his, but Billy doesn't see it that way. Um, he says he treated her like a queen, gave her a chance to be popular, but in return, she threw the worst party ever. Okay. Because this is all her fault, obviously. Um, if, <laughs> if he thinks that his treatment of Sam was treating her like a queen... <laughs> I would hate to see what he thinks bad treatment right? is. Right? I mean, damn. Okay, so the kids eventually attack Billy. They get her off of Sam, who now holds the sword. Uh, actually, not Sam isn't holding the sword. Billy is, and he ends up killing Jack. He just straight he, up stabs him. He plunges him. the sword through Jack. Now, Jack doesn't die immediately, but clearly he's and I'm like, not doing well. Oh, my God. Is that dark? Like, yeah. Jeez. Uh, Alien Dallas arrives. Uh Sam and Gary head for the attic. They don't bother uh, taking Miles with them. Right. Sam and Gary head for the attic, and uh, Sam breaks Billy's nose when he tries to follow. Mm -hmm. Finally, you know, standing up to him a little bit. Yes, uh, about time. <laughs> Billy pleads with Dallas and says, you know, you're still in there. Uh, you don't want to do this. But uh, Dallas just kind of eats his face off, and Billy that, finally gets what he deserves. That, that's literally my note here is Dallas <laughs> eats his face. <laughs> So, uh, Gary is threatened by Dallas, who then battles Sam. She loses her sword, but Gary calls for her to do the drop kick, And this takes out Dallas, but Gary is pulled. It takes him out yeah. by sending him through the ceiling. <laughs> he goes through the ceiling of the barn um, and out to the light outside. So, the ship is right outside yeah. the barn now. And it's got this force field pulling now. Mm -hmm. And it tries to pull Gary in. Yeah, and uh, by the way, Jack is not dead, but he's not exactly looking too good. Yeah, uh, so Miles is sitting with Jack. Nobody's, none of the aliens are bothering them at this point. Um, and Jack yells, grand finale. Now, 
very early in the movie, uh, and we didn't mention this, but when they were filming the movie, we learned that Jack was setting up something for the grand finale of the film they were recording, which involved an ATV covered in fireworks. Mm -hmm. Not sure exactly what their plan was to do with that in their, their movie, but this piece of equipment exists, an ATV covered in fireworks. Uh, so Miles lights the fireworks and like sets the ATV off. It gets pulled up into the ship by the force field, and it explodes. And it seemingly seems to destroy the ship. This frees Gary, by the way, from yeah. the force field. Not sure why. Right. Um, well, I mean, if the ship is no longer there, then... <laughs> well, the ship didn't, like... It didn't explode? It... The ship still exists. We know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I, I don't... Thought, I thought it was a different ship at the end, but, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Gary's freed. Yeah. Um, Gary tosses Sam the sword, and, and she... Sam kills the remaining Yeah, aliens. she takes out the last couple aliens that are in the, in the, uh, the barn or whatever. And uh, they all surround Jack. Now, they attempt to get him to the hospital in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. There's cars here. Yeah. I know that you maybe don't drive, but so, try. So they're not going to put him on a bike? And no, they put him in a wheelbarrow. Now? They're going to wheelbarrow this across town to the hospital? I don't think you're going to make it. Yeah. Maybe now call an ambulance. Maybe? Maybe. Right, maybe. But it doesn't matter anyway because within short order, Jack dies. Um, Jack asks Sam to protect the crystal, and this was uh, a prop from their film. It has something to do with the movie they were filming, mm. and, and she says, of course, she'll protect it, and then he is gone. Mm. Very sad. He is definitely gone, although later, in the next scene, they're going to say he's dying. No, he's dead. No, yeah, he's, he's very gone. much dead. Yeah. Um, okay, so several more aliens arrive, but so do men with guns, and this is the military? Uh, that's my best guess. Um, there is a character who is credited as Soldier. All right. And Soldier is played by Stephen Lawrence. This is his only credit to date. Um, and Soldier tells the other men to bag them. <laughs> Meanwhile, the kids are asking for help. Uh, Miles pleads that Jack is is going to die. Pretty sure he's already dead. Um, but instead, the he, men... He's not dead. He's sleeping. The men put plastic bags over all the kids' heads. Yep. Plastic bags. Yes. Over their heads. Yep. And takes all of them, including Jack. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then we see the kids Put and the aliens, all of them. Yep. They're all wheeled into a truck. They're in these pods. Yep. In the truck. Yes. Including the dead kid, the, all the aliens. The dead kid. The dead, yeah. Uh, Jack. Jack. Yeah. They're all, they're all put in these pods. And then the sword is take, picking it up off the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, this wrestler sword that she found in the alien cave. And it's put into this case that was clearly designed just for it. It's like a briefcase with, like, a styrofoam cutout of where the sword sits. So the case is already designed for this sword. The sword belongs in this case. And then the spaceship is shown up in the air. And that is where the movie and ends. And the end! And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? This is where you're going to end the movie? You got to be kidding me. Like, if you told me that this movie was written by 11-year-olds, written and created by 11-year-olds, I would believe you. Yeah, maybe this is the movie they were filming in the movie. Maybe. Uh, I mean, whew. So. But if, that, if I showed this to my 11-year-old, she'd have so nightmares So what was first. the deal with the sword? I, I Why did they have the case for it? It was special did alien technology. Did they know the sword was in existence? I guess so. Why are they taking everybody? I don't know. Who are these people? Are they the military? I would assume Are so. they another alien race that's at war with that alien race? Uh, yeah, maybe. Are, who, what, where, why? <laughs> there is absolutely nothing explained about this movie. We don't know why the movies, the aliens are here. I we even don't know what went as doing. far as like looking up, you know, like, oh, kids versus alien ending explained, right? Like there's something I missed, right? And I'm reading articles. No, <laughs> none of these articles explain anything. Yeah. Nobody got anything out of this that I didn't get. Right. So, um, yeah, that's a pretty terrible movie. I mean, ter terrible ending for a bad movie. Yeah, I'll agree with that. Um, <laughs> um, let me see. Did I get all of our, I got all of the named actors. I'm going to go ahead and talk about a couple of the background actors that I found to be notable. Okay. Okay. Now I didn't pick out who any of these people were in the film. Most of them I'm guessing were people at the party. Um, first of all, we had the other aliens and the other aliens were played by Ben DeViller, Caleb Allred, Tyler Williams, and Luai Abdul. Okay. Okay. So that's that. Now here's a couple of the uh, background actors 
notable to us. Obviously, Jamie McGuire. Yes. We knew he was in this. Didn't pick him out. I was probably too busy focusing on what the heck is this movie about. <laughs> if I watched it a third time, specifically looking for him, I could probably see him. I'm guessing he was at the party. Because mm -hmm. there were a lot of kids at the party. Yep. Um, Jamie McGuire, of course, being Smiley Monster on From. Uh, if you don't know who that is... I, you don't, you're in the wrong place. But his most important credit his is... His most important credit is uh, his interview with us. Yes, of course. Yes. Uh, yep. Jamie has appeared on Corman Productions, Deep Dive TV podcast, in an interview where we talked about his role as Smiley. We also talked about his background appearance on The Sinner. And uh, he's a great guy. So oh, make absolutely. sure you check that out. Um, and then we have uh, Stephanie Clairvy, who is in an episode of From. She's in episode 109. Uh, her character's name is Woman. Well, that's very helpful. So it means she has a line. Well, that's um, She must be one of the town residents or one of the colony house residents. Yeah. And she has a line in episode nine. Which means there's always a chance we get to see more of her in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, because 109, that means she survived the massacre. So she must still be there. Yep. Uh, then we have Anne Doyle, is also a background performer in this film. And Anne, of course, played Lauren Pratt in From. Uh, yes. Only in one episode because she had a very quick... And to her. Yes. Uh, that is the mother of Megan mm -hmm. uh, in, in the opening sequence of From. Yep. And let's see a couple more notable mm -hmm. names. You already mentioned this one. Uh, Marietta Lan, Lon, uh, who is in a season two episode of Sullivan's Crossing that we haven't seen yet as of when we're recording. And she played Zoe in Halloween Party. So she's been in two of our October discussions now. Yes. That's interesting. That is funny. Uh, there is a background actor in this film named jeremy smith he is a stand-in on three episodes of the sinner okay don't know who he stood in for but no. he's credited for that uh did he mention the season he was in in our season season four okay season yeah. four okay see when we talk about the sinner we're only talking about season four <laughs> that's the one we covered and it's filmed in nova scotia and yep. all that good stuff uh and then one more is uh nancy kenny and Nancy uh, plays the FBI agent in the pilot of Sullivan's Crossing. Okay. That arrests Maggie. Gotcha. Um, okay. So yeah, she's, I her. she's background in this as well. And then there's about a hundred other background actors who I really want to name, but I might eat a water break in between. Yeah. So it, why don't we finish our thoughts and then I'm just going to end by reading a long list of names. Okay. So yeah, like I said, terrible movie. I, I really wanted to like this movie. I thought I thought from from the previews that it would be good, even if it wasn't necessarily something that was for me. I thought on some level that I would end up enjoying it, but from frame one, I'm like, "What the hell is this movie? And how am I going to talk about it?" Um, yeah, I'm sure there's somebody who enjoyed this movie. It, I'm sure it wasn't me. No, no, it wasn't my mother. It was not my husband. I mean, there was wasn't you apparently. <laughs> there were some reviews. Of the movie that were positive, but even even one review that I checked out asked the same question that I did: what, Who is who was this movie made for? Yeah, because it's so schizophrenic. I would love so to talk to Phoebe because yeah. I'd love to know her opinions of the movie. Do you think she would give us a real opinion though? I mean, probably not. I would also love to talk to Phoebe for other reasons <laughs> that than the fact that she's you know the love of my life, but. Um, yeah, I, I, I would love to interview her, uh, talking about her role in From, and of course... I this, think we have movie. a lot more to talk about in the one episode of From than this whole film. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, she could talk about her experiences making this film, and you know, if she wants to give a real opinion, she certainly could, but I don't think she would. I, I think she would be give a diplomatic answer. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I'm glad... I don't regret taking on this film, because, you know, even... The Haunting in Connecticut, which was a pain in the butt to write notes about, and which was not a great film, was still fun to talk about. And I, yeah. think, I think I still think we created a fun podcast. Uh, so I don't necessarily regret taking on this movie. But at the same time, yeah, it was not good. It was not good. Um, but now we know. Yeah. Yeah. And we've been seeing it in people's credits for a while now. And, yeah. And now we know. Mm -hmm. And because all of these background actors are listed in IMDb... I feel like some of these names will pop up in other things we do as they Probably. continue to appear. Did you in... go through and look through every one of their internet I pages? I peeked just to see if yeah. there was ones that stood out, such as, you know, the one who, who did yeah. work on our other because shows. There was a ridiculous amount of... Yes. So we're yeah. going to go ahead and let's do our sign-off. But then before we actually stop recording, 
I'm just going to read this list of about 1,247 names. So you want me to like just do the, the whole blurb? Do and the then... whole blurb, and then I'm just going to uh, credit us out with our background actors. All right. So <laughs> we would like to hear from you, Stacey, we reached out. I can reach on Twitter, X, Instagram. Oh, Ooh. okay. Ooh. Sorry. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention. Okay. There was an after credit sequence. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I didn't watch it. Tell me about it. We did end up seeing the fate of what happened to the parents. Okay. They come home to their house in a disaster. They're swearing about how the kids, like, are, you know, are in big trouble. They're talking about how they should have never had kids. And, <laughs> and, and do we get to see the... The graffitied wall and portrait. Well, we just kind of see uh, Gary's camera filming from one of the rooms. Okay, so it's found footage. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're basically talking about how they should never should have had kids, and I agree with them. They should never have had kids. <laughs> and then uh, they're basically murdered by the aliens, and that's the end of that. And that was the end credit sequence. Oh, so the aliens are still there. Yes. Even though the the Men in Black took them. Yes. Okay. So that's in interesting information there. All right, so. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. Stacey can be reached at. I can reach on Twitter, X, Instagram, and threads at TVN Coupon Talk. If you like this video and want to support the channel, there are a number of ways to do so. You can follow me on Twitter at Core Productions. You can join one of my Core Productions Facebook pages. You can buy something from the Core Productions store on Zazzle. You can buy me a copy. You can. Yeah, you can buy me a copy. And of course, you can uh, do the Corn Productions membership for 99 cents a month. You can like, share, and comment on this video, hitting the bell to be notified when new content drops. And you can subscribe to our channel. This I threw them all off. Yes. All right, here's a list of the rest of the background actors. Woof. Caden Mendez Mullen, Greg Fawn, Thomas Green, Fernando Vaca, Aiden Burke, Alan Dunlop, Jesse Granholm, Noah Refuse, Benjamin Walker. Joseph McAllister, Selzar Hansen, uh, Jamie J. Asparaga, Aiden Fry, Azar D. Not even going to attempt that one. Uh, Caden Munden, Shayla Wright, Herschel Braggin, April Weikert, Kaylee Krisham, Keent Seals, Christopher Finless, Connor Jeffries, Jennifer Murray Stokes, Zach Meeker, Vincenzo Rivera, Alexandra Gatto McDonald, Landon Reed Dequette, Brandon Lam uh, Lorimer, Maria Young, Regime Umali, Alexandra McDonald, Riley Reed, Avery Morris, Grace Rowan Quinsaw, sorry, uh, Rooksfield Green, Emily Ranson, Fiona Clancy, Neo Alexander Ragsack, <laughs> Jack Elliott, Hal Rothman, Reese Enderlein, Jack Wigan, Michael Enderlane, Emma Robson, Patrick McKay, Hillary Adams, Emmett McEachern, Daryl Nogler, Max Machini, Karen Dillon, Genevieve Riker, Courtney Fowler, Bonnie Russell, Gabriel Ricard, Jessica Walker, Holly Jean, Holly spelled very interestingly, H-A-W-L-E-Y, hmm. um, Bryce Weedman, Joshua Langston, Tyree Haley, Rachel Lloyd, Jim Temple, David Mortimer, and Tyler Brothers. And if you listen to that whole list, please reply to this podcast with an alien emoji. <laughs> and I apologize that 90% of those names I just said wrong. All right. This is Dave and Stacy from Core Productions signing off. Bye.